Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. This morning's going to be good. Um, this morning I want to start in Mark chapter 10. I want to take us on a journey. We are, uh, we are technically in an evangelism series right now, although we've been a little bit just letting God move and t- talking. God's been promoting. Promotion and evangelism go hand in hand, by the way, because it's the power of the blood and the word of your testimony. So when God's doing a thing in your life, you're very ripe to reach out to people because you've got a testimony. You've got a fresh thing that God's doing. And God's, God's getting you guys ready, me, you, our church ready. He's, we're in a season of promotion. I want to tell you, we are in a season of promotion. Promotion, most of the time in the kingdom, looks like all the promotions you read in your Bible. It's crazy, right? It's like God was giving you a hint of what it looks like. So David had been prophesied that he would be king. But the door to go through was taking down a giant. And then when he got through that door, there was more processing to be had. But, but God promoted him through the battle. And so as we've been sharing that we are in a season of promotion, I have became heightenedly aware, just talking to people in our church, that oh, that means we got to have a, also a season of taking down some giants that kept us from promotion in the past. And look, they always come from your past. The devil, so crafty, so, so consistent, uses your past to disqualify you for the promotion God wants to put you to in your future. That's his technique. And so I kind of want to hijack that. Um, and really, this message is I want to lay a couple foundations for you because they're the found, it's the foundation... That's everything. Anybody remember, our, like the, there's been a lot of Batman series. So can we just talk about that for a minute? There's been some seasons of Batman. I, 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 I wouldn't say I'm a hardcore, you know, comic nerd. I'd say it like grazed me. Like it just nicked me, you know, <laughs> like a Trump shot. Just barely got me. Um, so I like superhero movies. I like, I like good and evil. I like the battles. I like the fights. My favorite by far was the Dark Knight version of Batman, the Christian Bale version, you know? And I've seen them all, okay? All the way from the 1960s. Okay, I've, I've, I'm, I am fluent, so I'm not speaking from a place of uh, inexperience, okay? And one of my fa- I actually love the first movie, the origin story. I love origin stories, by the way. I'm going to start, instead of saying, like, testimonies, I'm going to just start walking to people like, hey, tell me your origin story. It just makes you feel a lot cooler right off the bat. You're like, my origin story? Oh, where do I start? <laughs> so the origin story. But there's a scene in the first movie where they're fighting. Uh, he's being trained by Raj something. Raj will go, see, like I said, Nick me, didn't get me. The true comic fans are like, you, know, you should know this. I wish Pastor Alec was here. Alex was here. But uh, he's being trained on a frozen lake. And thank you. Pastor Scott, yep, Pastor Scott, it, it nicked you maybe a little more than it nicked me. <laughs> um, Raja Ghoul, that's what it is. And so he's being trained, and he's getting better, and he thinks he's done the right move. He does some kind of cool slide and picks up his sword, and he's like, yeah, I got you. And Raja Ghoul says, no, you've traded sure footing for this shot, and he hits the ice, and Batman falls into the ice and then has to defrost and all that. And, and that was sticking with me because this is the foundation to make sure that your footing is sure. Okay, because in order to get promotion, promotion always requires uh, two things. You can go to Joshua chapter one. Joshua went from being the PA of Moses to now you got to lead a million plus people into the promised land. And the whole time God kept saying, Moses is the deliverer, Moses is the deliverer. And and he was, but all of a sudden Joshua's like, wait, this is a generational thing God's going to do. 
I've got to step into the shoes, and I don't get the magic stick. God was very clear. He's like, you don't get the magic stick. You just get me, you know, and which was a better, better end of the deal, but at the time might have felt, well, that magic stick would have been nice, you know? And so the sure footing, whenever God is calling you promotion, you must, you must be strong and courageous in the Lord. Joshua 1.9, be strong and courageous. Christian, I'm here to tell you that God doesn't have or doesn't let you stay a coward and a wuss on his team. He actually has bravery he wants to impart into you. You know, the word encourage literally means to put courage into somebody. So when we're an encouraging culture, when we're a culture that looks for the gold in you instead of looks for the problem with you, you have to understand we're a kingdom alignment. What we're trying to do is speak to the things which God has placed in you and trying to get you to have confidence not in you but in in him in him that he's called you to have breakthrough. He's called you to break this generational curse. He's called you to have faith for a healing. He's called you into this place, okay? And and one of the things that we struggle with, especially when it's the Goliath, you gotta understand the Philistines were kind of like mosquitoes, okay? Like the temptation for Israel was just to be like, they're always gonna be here. There's too many of them. We're just gonna deal with them. But God had said, I need you to completely remove these people from this land. And so here we, we find David. And by the way, completely throwing David. And David had nothing to do with his message until this morning when the Holy Spirit brought it. So thank you, Jesus, for bringing this together. But I want to start in Matthew 10, 7 through 9. You guys got it there? Perfect. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leopard, raise the dead, cast out demons. Now catch this last part. Freely you have received, freely give. Freely you have received, freely give. Jesus is talking right here to his disciples who, by the way, at this point, everything is still very blurry of what the heck they're doing with Jesus. Okay, they they didn't have the revelation of him as Savior for our eternal souls until after the resurrection. So they thought he was like a militant kind of king, like he was actually going to just take the throne. And so they're thinking we're getting ready for war. And he's like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to have you go out and you're going to do those four things, which like we read it like, oh, yeah, it's in the Bible. But you have to understand they they were just watching Jesus do stuff. And then Jesus just drops some, hey, I'm going to send you out and you're going to go do the things you're going to go heal the dead, or uh, raise the dead, okay? I don't know about you, but I would have been a little intimidated, especially not knowing exactly what the heck the plan was in the first place. But God has called us to do the miraculous. Do the miraculous. But I really want to highlight here that the end of that, he ends with this statement, and it's a loaded statement. It says, freely you have received. Freely go give. What Jesus is implying there is, I've done these things in your life. And that's where the faith to lay hands on people and see it happen to them comes from. It actually comes from a willingness to let God do the work in your life. That's where that source and that flow of faith, faith is, it comes from hearing the word, seeing the word work in your life. And so God is very vested. Listen to me, God is very vested in your personal healing, because that's the, that's the place where the faith and the, and the source comes from. When David had to fight Goliath, it was, in the, it was alone with God watching dumb sheep that prepared him to take on a giant. It was the work, see, David had seen him be delivered from, it says, a bear and a lion. So in the midst of having to protect the sheep, he had to fight off predators. And he had had experiences in his own personal life that now brought him to this place where he would have a public victory because of the private work God had done. Freely you received, freely you give. God wants to do some miracles in your life, not just for you. Now, don't get me wrong. It's his primary goal. One of the bummers that has happened in church life 
is that you'll go to churches that are very evangelistic, like it's all about winning souls and getting people saved. And don't get me wrong, we gotta go hard in the paint on that. That is, that is, <laughs> that's a big deal, okay? But God said the Great Commission is make disciples, okay? And so while that's part of the process, you can't disciple somebody who doesn't belong to Jesus, okay? It's part of the process, not the whole process. It's actually how you make a strong church is it's the, per, it's the people that have had the personal time with God and the sheep and seeing God deliver them from their own personal bears and lions. By the way, there's significance even in that. Bears represent generational curses. Anyways, as I want to get in on that. But God wants you to have those personal victories in your world so that freely you received, freely you give. Freely you give. That's why we even preach on tithing and giving and all that. People get really upset, like, oh, the church just wants your money while they're sitting in nice soft chairs that people don't generously bought for you. But anyways, neither, <laughs> neither here nor there. While you're looking at a screen that somebody sewed into the kingdom so you could see the word of God big enough for your eyes to see it, while you're listening to worship music that I don't even want to guess how much all this sound equipment runs and what it takes. Chewy can answer that. But what I'm saying is, you know, people like, how could the church want money? But I still want to go to a nice church, you know, like anyways. But, but that's even the practical. Take the practical out of it because that actually doesn't matter. If you're not going to give, God will raise up somebody else. God will raise somebody else up. So it's all good, okay? But God's more interested in you getting into this receiving his kingdom blessing so that when the Bible says crazy things like, being able to give to every good work that your heart desires. You don't read that as like some cute little harmony. You actually say, you know what, Lord? I want to get to that point. Because I've received the blessing of God. I've received the faithfulness of God. And so I want to get to that point where I've received it so that I can freely give it. Amen? Amen. Okay, freely you give, freely you receive. Okay, so how do we freely get? That's literally the foundation right here. And I'm going to go through three points quick because we're going to pray for healings today. Because I believe here's the deal. God's getting ready for us to take it to the streets, if you will. Or in, uh, what's that, the Godfather. Take it to the mattress, right? Is that what it is? Scott, come on, help me, right? With the horse head? That's what that means. I know that, but anyways, come back. Come back, Holy Spirit. Let's go over here. No Godfather in references. We're gonna, we are going to go out and share the goodness of God. I'm telling you, God has a requirement. He says, I need you to experience that personally for you. Jesus is, God's original promise that all the nations of the earth would be blessed by Abraham's offspring, right? That was the original promise. Isn't it interesting that when he brought him back to the promised land, first he said, I need you to go clean house here before that can go out to the nations. He was setting up people apart for the savior of the world to bring in the greatest rescue mission that humanity's ever seen, which was Jesus. And he had to get the people ready. And so here we go. Point number one, this is incredibly deep and you've probably, I don't know if you've ever heard this. So just really buckle up. But point number one, Jesus is God. Jesus is, I know. No way. You didn't. Yeah, no, it's a joke. It, it's all over the Bible. Let me give you a couple scriptures. Listen, this points may sound elementary, but until they cause you to rise up like David and say, that, I don't care how tall the giant is. I don't care how long the giants lived. I don't care where it came from or how it got here. I have God with me. I have God with me. Until that faith generates up, it comes from the foundation. It comes from the basis. Jesus is God. Not a nice prophet. Okay? In one sense, he is our brother because he is the one that got us adopted as child of God, but he's the one true son of God. We were created by God. He's the son of God. He is a part of God. The Trinity in Genesis, God says, let us create man in our image. He's talking of the Trinity. He's speaking of the Holy Spirit, the Father, and the Son. They, they perfectly coexist. God's relational even within himself. But he wanted to make vessels that he could love. He wanted to make souls that he could love, and he made us, and he offers us adoption into the family. 
Okay? He is God. John 10, 30. I and my Father are one. Okay? I and my Father are one. John 13, 19 through 20. And now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, you may believe that I am he. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who receives who are whomever I send receives me, and he who receives me receives him who sent me. John 8, 58, 59. Jesus said to them, most surely I say to you before Abraham was. This is the kicker. Okay, notice the response. He didn't leave this vague. To the, in the Jewish culture, it was very clear what he was saying. He said, I'm the son of man, or uh, where am I? Jesus said, John 8, 58. Jesus said to them, most assuredly I say to you before Abraham was, I am. That is the first name God reveals to Moses. Yahweh, I am. He's saying, before Abraham was, I am. Then they took up stones and threw uh, to throw at him. But Jesus himself uh, went out of the temple going through the midst of them. And so he passed by. Jesus had this cool ninja vibe that he could turn on, which was really neat. He did it a few times where it would be like, everyone's going to kill him. He just goes, you're not looking for me anymore. And he walks through. <laughs> Does like a little Jedi mind trick. I'm not the droid you're looking for. And he just whoosh, walks through the crowd. But he was getting in a lot of trouble. It was ultimately the thing that caused the Pharisees to want to kill him is that he kept walking around saying, I'm God. I'm God. I'm God. Why is that important? Why is that important? Because once you accept Jesus, you got to realize at the core of you, you've been accepted by God. Look, my boys... Had a had an extended weekend. Okay, they had fr- they had a half day on Thursday and they had Friday off. We're in a normal kind of rhythm of school time is kind of get stuff done and recharge time. Okay, and so Friday, I don't know if it was because we were off schedule because we let them stay up late on Thursday night, but for whatever, these were not my children. <laughs> these were somebody else's kids. I don't know who raised them. But I mean, everything, everything was whining. Everything was fighting. It was the WWE SmackDown. I mean, we should have, ordered, we should have charged pay-per-view to watch what was going on in our house. And I was so frustrated with behavior. I'm literally, you know, I'm, any parents, let's be real. You ever like get so to the point with kids where you walk out and you're actually like, God, what am I doing wrong? What, what, where am I? Thank you. Thank you, Rich. Like, what am I doing that is producing that? You know, and we have those moments. But I'll tell you this, never in that time frame, never in that time frame did I consider offering them up for adoption. (laughs) It's not in the wheelhouse. Never in that time frame was I ready to disown them. Never in that time frame was I going to give up on them. In fact, as a dad, my resilience doubled down. I'm like, okay, we are going to set some standards and we are going to get these boys on track because they are called to be world changers, history makers. Uh, I, I, you know, I, it is every night, by the way, we have a routine. I pray over them. That's in that routine. They're called to this. And my job is to get them there or at least get them for, far along the course. Get them to there till they're 18 and then Jesus help me, Okay. But that's my job. And why, why I'm saying this is that if you remember Jesus is God, and then you remember that he picked you. The Bible says no one can come to faith without Jesus first opening your eyes. So even though you do have to partner with him and pick, he reached out and he said, I, I pick you first. I pick you first. I want you to see that salvation comes from me. But you have a father in heaven who's not going to quit on you. And why is that foundation so important? Because the devil is tricky. He goes for disqualification. You know who he easily disqualifies? Orphans. And by the way, if you, if you were adopted and you came out, this is, but I'm saying it's the spirit of an orphan. I don't belong. Nobody wanted me. Nobody picked me. It's the spirit of the orphan that causes that pain. So God has picked you and he, he's not gonna leave you you got to have that foundation to step into what God has for you. Point number two, and I love this one. He's a friend of sinners. Jesus was a friend of sinners. Matthew eleven nineteen, 19, the son of man came eating and drinking with others, and they said, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, including the nominal observant of the Jews. 
Yet wisdom is justified and vindicated by her deeds. It lives in those who respond to me. Jesus is a friend to sinners. He actually doesn't start with your behavior. He doesn't move towards your behavior, meaning you've earned his forgiveness. He actually moves toward you in your brokenness. And then it's, 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 it's how you see him that matters. Okay, next, Luke 5.30. But the Pharisees and their teachers of religious law complained bitterly to Jesus' disciples, why do you eat and drink with such scum? Jesus had a reputation. He had a reputation for hanging out with the wrong crowd. He had a reputation for uh, hanging out with people that weren't good enough. He's a friend of sinners. Jesus answered him. I'm going to go to Luke 5.31. Jesus answered him saying, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I've come to call not those who think they are righteous. I love the way that puts it. I've called... I've come to call those. I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners and need to repent. Listen, Jesus met you in your mess, and he stays with you in the mess to pull you out of the mess. That's why religion is 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 from an antichrist spirit. Religion puts up these walls. If you do all the things, then you're accepted. Jesus says, let me accept you. And then from that place, I'll begin to transform you. From that place, no longer condemned, already forgiven, already set free. Why is this foundation so important to step into your promotion? Because the enemy will whisper, you don't deserve that. And here's the great thing. It's the one thing you can agree with him on, okay? You're right. In my own strength, I don't. But Jesus deserves this, and I'm his. Jesus deserves this, and I'm his. Jesus deserves me to be placed in a place of more influence at my work because I'm his. And my goal, although I'm not perfect, how do I know I'm not perfect? Because he's a friend of sinners. Take it, like, like don't get me wrong. We don't want to own sinner. We are now a saint who occasionally struggles with sin, but he is still a friend. He's a friend. When you're at your low, that's when Jesus, we're like, oh, Jesus must not want to be around me. And he's like, that's when he's like almost creepy Jesus. You're like, oh, Jesus must not, you're, you're down in your little, I feel bad pity party. And you're like, Jesus would never want to talk to me right now. And he's like, I'm right behind you. Ah! But he's right there. He's right there in your mix. And the last part, foundational 101, he's the healer. He's the healer. There's a progress here. First, you need to understand that Jesus is God. Then you're going to understand that he loves you despite your brokenness. That he came to you because you're broken. And then you got to understand that he's the healer that because he's offered to be your friend, that time with him begins to heal the things that you thought disqualified you in the first place. He's the healer. He's the healer. John 5, 16, 18. So the Jewish leaders began harassing Jesus for breaking the Sabbath rules. But Jesus replied, my father is always working and so am I. What's this work Jesus is talking about? What's the work? Well, the verses before this, Jesus healed a guy. So Jesus says, I'm sorry. I know you need to take a Sabbath because you're human. I'm human. We need a break. But my father's always working. And even when he's giving me a break, he's working on healing me. See, the work of God is healing. He's trying to heal you. He's trying to restore you. He's trying to free you. Why? Freely you receive, freely you give. I don't like people that preach from things they've never experienced. I shouldn't say I don't like those people. I love those people. I don't like messages where it's an idea that's not tested. That's why I don't believe in, I believe you can subsidize or have some extra great teaching from good teachers online, but that is not a substitute for having a local church. It's not a substitute. 
And I'm very weary of anybody that wants to give me Christian advice that doesn't apply it first. If you know how to run a perfect church, go start a church, let it blow up, let revival break out, and then we'll listen to you. But until then, don't be the guy who just wants to bash other Christians for doing something you don't think works. 1 Peter 2.24, he personally carried our, 1 Peter 2.24, he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we could be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, we are healed. And last one, Matthew 8, 2 through 3. Suddenly a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I'm willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Church, we are called to preach a kingdom. It's a kingdom that we're supposed to live in. Go back, guys, to Matthew 10, 7, and 8. And so go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does the kingdom look like? Well, the sick are getting healed. The lepers are getting cleansed. They're raising the dead, and they're casting out demons. And then he says, freely you received. I believe this morning, and we can take this away, gentlemen, because I'm done with this. I believe this morning is a receiving morning. Because the command is to take this kingdom, I want you to take what I did in you, and I want you to see it spread out for others. And look, this is process. So what I don't like is when people say, well, once I'm healed, then I'll talk about what Jesus is doing. Once I never have a struggle again, then I'll talk about, no, no, no. It's progressive healing and sharing. Jesus gave me a breakthrough today. I gotta talk about it. I'm gonna share it. And, and the devil's gonna whisper, yeah, but what about, no, no, no. I'm gonna keep walking. As you share your testimony, you will see God's power begin to bring more breakthrough. He's looking for this beautiful dance. You receive, you share. And not weird sharing, not tracks, just organic. Call a friend, celebrate with them, love on people. If you let God heal you and say, God, I'd like to share what you did. If you pray that prayer, he will bring people. He will bring people. But it starts here. It starts here. Some things God said he wants to heal. There's a thing in the Bible called generational curses. Some of us are fighting battles just like David had to fight Goliath, that was Joshua's fight. That was somebody else's fight. And maybe they fought, but they weren't, they didn't finish it. And now it's come back to you. It can manifest in cycles that you don't know where it came from, but it just keeps happening. Man, I keep, I keep going through these uh, abusive relationship cycles. Man, I keep going through this lust cycle, this pornography cycle. Man, I keep going through these things. God wants to break generational curses today. He wants to break them off of you. Maybe it's health. Man, we can never get our health right. It's like one thing after another. One thing you get, you, you, you go to a doctor, you deal with one thing, and then it feels like, man, boom, 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 boom. God wants to heal that. By his stripes, your body was healed, the Bible says. I believe God wants to heal trauma. Trauma. Man, my marriage didn't work out. And so now I'm here. And I'm, I'm never gonna let myself be open again. I'm never gonna believe that I could have a spouse again. It, trauma, uh, man, I lost, unexpectedly, I lost this loved one. And so I live in perpetual fear that something bad's gonna happen every day. I daydream of how I'm gonna handle the next bad news. Come on, there's some of you in here, you find yourself daydreaming about losing, losing everything you have. What am I gonna do when everything gets taken away from me? God wants to break that trauma off of you. God wants to break that trauma off you. He wants to break an orphan spirit. Nobody's gonna be there for me. He wants to break the mindset that you, you're never gonna have enough. He wants to heal. And finally, I believe he wants to heal in bodies. I believe he wants to heal in bodies. If you've got a chronic illness, if you've got a bad doctor's report, 
I believe he wants to heal. So we're gonna do something kind of cool today and it'll be quick, but you don't have to. But I believe this altar is ready for the healing of God. Freely you have received. Don't come up here begging God for a miracle. Actually come up here with the posture of God. I know you love everyone out there and I know you chose me and I know you're God. So I believe that today you're gonna heal me because freely I wanna receive so I can give, so I can be a person that has faith to pray for people. So I, I receive it because of what you deserve, Jesus. So I'm gonna ask you to bow your heads. If you need to receive something from the Lord today in the area of healing, in the categories I mentioned or anywhere else, I'm gonna open up this altar and I'm gonna ask you to come forward. This isn't gonna be long because it's not about how long, but it's, but I wanna lay hands on every person that needs a miracle today. Now, I don't care if it's just one person. That's good enough for me. But if you need a miracle today, if you need a healing today, come to the altar right now. Come to the altar. There we go. Lots of people. Very happy. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You guys can play a champion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're going to sit right here in this moment for 30 seconds here. I just want you to not ask God for anything. I want you to turn your palms to heaven if you're on this altar. Or maybe your heart's on this altar. Maybe you're in the crowd right now and I feel this, actually. Somebody, you're in the crowd and you really want to be up here, but you have been so beat up, so beat up by the enemy. And God says, I'm with you in that seat right now. I'm with you. It's okay. good, but listen, Jesus is the healer. Thank you, Jesus. If you're in the crowd right now, just worship. I want, we're going to sing this song, just the chorus. I want you to sing this song. I'm going to come down on the altar and just lay hands on everyone real quick, but God is healing right now.
lift our hands to heaven. Some people right now, actually, everyone on this altar, you felt that. You felt God touch you. You felt God heal you. Lord, more, 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 Lord, more, Lord, more, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for more. We thank you that things die here on this altar today, that chains are broken, God. Chains are broken off of people's lives, Lord. We thank you for freedom, Lord. Freedom from addiction, freedom from destructive cycles, Lord. We thank you for healing in our bodies. I thank you, Lord, that you're healing pancreases right now, that you're healing gut issues, that you are healing migraines in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, that you are healing tumors, that you are removing tumors right now, Lord. Lord, that you are healing autoimmune disease. We cancel mental illness. If you've received the diagnosis of depression, tell God thank you that I am not depressed, but I have joy. I have access to joy. Joy is not happiness. Happiness is what happens to you, but joy comes from the Lord. So God, we thank you for breakthrough, Lord. We thank you that this is a week where giants are falling in our life, Lord, that some of you, you're gonna go home and you're gonna clean house. Some of you are gonna go home and you're gonna throw out those pills. You're gonna throw out that alcohol. You're gonna throw out those things. Some of you are gonna go home and you're gonna call that person that you need to call and forgive. God, we thank you that breakthrough comes this morning, that you are healing in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen. For more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now. Bye for now.